This is a video about the Gibson Super Thor amplifier. Um, but just the insides, uh, just the, the technical part. I won't be playing any music in this video. You won't hear how it sounds. I'll make a separate video for that if there's time. Anyway, this is the uh, Gibson uh, Super Thor. It's usually regarded as a bass amp. I'll get to the knobs later, but um, that's the brand. That's the whole thing. I already undid the screws. So I want to show you what the chassis uh, looks like in the electronics. So here we go. You uh, remove this cover here. Then there's four screws up here. Do it carefully. Don't strip them. Um, then you've got to uh, unplug this speaker uh, wire. And then you just carefully wash your hands so your oils don't make it dirty. And there you are. This is all there is to it actually it's a solid state amplifier so it's pretty simple um, I'll begin by showing you what the uh, date sticker reads There's a little label in here that uh, was uh, placed in here and says uh, June 23rd 1972 I don't know what the 96 is for or is that a is that a slash 96 or a 196 couldn't tell you but uh, it's pretty cool that these things are made um, in Lincolnwood, Illinois. Anyway, this is the um, this is the circuit board. Uh, my camera takes a while to focus. So a lot of apologies for that. Um, we'll get to that later. Uh, those are the two capacitors. You can kind of see them under the frame, the chassis here. There they are. They might need replacing. Who knows? Um, there is a code on the bottom of this, but it's not very interesting. It just says uh, PT789. Space in uh, 45. Don't know what that means. Anyway, that's the back panel there. Man, this video sucks because it's like so out of focus. Damn it. That's better. These are probably your uh, two amplifiers there. Got a few uh, IC chips and other things, capacitors, resistors. Pretty simple design. You know, I didn't clean this. I, I wanted, you know, this is the first time it's ever been opened, I presume, since 1972, since it was manufactured. And um, I just kind of wanted to show what the experience is like of, of opening something up that hasn't been opened in, uh, what, 48 years? It's a really trip back in time. And, um, you know, something that's also kind of interesting is that um, this, oh, that's the uh, rectifier, by the way. Um, it smells like you went back in time. It's just the whole experience of it, and especially when you play it and the speaker moves the, uh, the air. Um, it really has a nice smell. That's the outlet here. Um, you can see sort of some like corrosion building up on the screw. That's what happens when you get an older uh, device. It's a grounding screw of some kind. And uh, we're probably going to finish this video up pretty soon, but that's, uh, that's just about it. There's some junk in there. I think you can even see a little fly that got stuck in there somehow. <laughs> Old stuff. And there you go. I'm going to show the knobs and then I'll turn this video off. See if it focused by now. Come on, camera. There we go. Gibson Super Thor, made in Lincolnwood. And doesn't want to come in right. Come on. There we go. You can actually plug four different uh, inputs into this. And I found that there's not much different in sound. Um, 
between the instrument and the, I'm sorry, rather the, the normal inputs and the bass inputs. That is very subtle. The bass is obviously has more bottom end. It's a little bit more boomy, but only slightly. It might be because it's so old and the capacitors, you know, are f over 40, almost 50 years old. Maybe it needs a new, you know, recap job, but um, I don't know. It, 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 I would say if you're going to sound like um, uh, Lemmy from uh, Motorhead, you would probably want to use this one because you get more of a guitar kind of throaty sound out of it. Uh, but there is a prominent difference between the two, the low and the highs, that, that's for sure. Um, but whatever, you know, I would recommend that you close your eyes and just kind of listen to what works for you. And um, there's two different um, power sw switching because the um, plug on these looks like this. There's no grounding pin, so uh, this is just sort of a noise cancellation one way. And I found that it's, uh, it sounds the exact same no matter whether you uh, flick it up or down. I don't think I've ever had a, a, a time when uh, I could actually hear any difference or if there was uh, anything sonic, sonically different. Um, buzzing or whatnot. Anyway, that's it. I, uh, it's two 15-inch speakers. There's two sound holes. You can't really see them, and it's it's loud. It sounds pretty cool. And it's um, I'm I'm selling it on Craigslist today. The guy's driving three hours to come and pick it up. So uh, that's that's what kind of prompted this video. <laughs> and um, I th it, it, the deal hasn't gone down yet, but I'm asking about four hundred dollars here in the. Uh, in the flu season, the uh, the Wuhanic plague. We'll see what happens. I, I, I really want to keep this thing, but I, I just can't have any any big stuff right now, and that's that's the reason. Okay, I hope you uh, enjoy this video. There's not much information about these. Um, happy playing.